Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of TMI 365. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to investigate threats within Azure Sentinel. I'm here within the Azure Sentinel portal and on the main dashboard here, you have some telemetry coming through about all the events through the data sources that you've connected to the service here and all the incidents in a delta change over the time period that you've selected here. You can modify this time period, which then will dynamically update the graphs and charts here on your main dashboard as well. If I pop over into the incident section, I can see more information about all the alerts and incidents coming through across all the data sources that I've connected here. So the product names reflect the data points. And you can see there's a list here spanning Azure Active Directory, Cloud App Security, Microsoft Defender. Notice in the alert section here, you have isolated alerts, but then you also have correlated alerts into incidents here. Clicking into those brings up a page where you can see more of the description, the product names that made up that particular incident. And then down below, you have a full scope of what's being affected, such as the devices, the users, maybe it's files or processes as well, that have all been correlated into this incident. If I click into the full details, I can see more about this incident. I can see the timeline here of the sequence of alerts that have come through and the timestamps associated with those. If I actually go down and I click into the investigate section here, I get a graphical view of this attack and I can zoom in to see more information about the assets that were affected. Clicking into those, I can click into more details and bring up more granular details about this particular asset. So in this case, I have a Nets PC here. On the left hand side, I can see more information about the OS type, the OS version, if it's domain joined, the heartbeat as well too when it's checking into this Defender service. And in the middle section here, I have more alerts over time and the sequence there so I can see a trailed activity of all the alerts going on on that device. And on the right hand side, I can see more telemetry about the sign in activity, the processes that have been executed recently. So there's a lot of metadata that I can use to further my search and investigation potentially if this device is compromised or if I'm trying to learn a little bit better about the attack chain that might be going on within my organization. Back on the graphical view here, you can click actually on these assets as well. And Microsoft gives you these predefined queries that you can use to expand your search as well. In some cases, you may find that they're not gonna come up with any other telemetry. In other cases, they may expand your view here so I can see the IP address that was associated with this as well. And then clicking into the IP address, I could see potentially related alerts from this as well. And I can keep expanding my search so I can just drill in from this graphical view in my environment. So it's a really cool experience. It gives you a lot better view into everything going on within this attack chain. Back on the incident page here, I think it's important to call out how these alerts are actually triggered and how incidents are defined. You can actually see all this information within the analytics tab over here on the left. So let's go ahead and pop in there now. So here on the analytics page, I have the ability to see all the rules that have been set across the products that I've connected to the Azure Sentinel service here, which really define what types of alerts or incidents are generated in this account. I can click into them to see more information about this as well. And the really cool part is that you can actually create your own rules that trigger alerts or incidents within your environment. So if I click on schedule query rule here, I get taken into a wizard experience to define what parameters are being set and what actions are taken once that alert is created within my environment. So I'll go ahead and give it a name here. I can define any tactics based off the MITRE framework, and this could really help with categorization, with threat hunting, with searchability within your tenant. So I recommend that you would add a couple here that relate to this particular alert. You can define a severity as well that will come through. On the rule logic page, you're really defining the query that is going to generate this alert. You have a lot of metadata here that I won't be going through fully, but essentially here you can schedule this query to run at a certain basis. So you can define it based off of minutes, hours, or days. You can also define the alert threshold where it has to define a certain number that it's been generated here to actually populate that alert for you. So to say that this query returned three results, and if it's greater than that, then you have the ability to generate that alert. So lots of cool abilities there. You have the ability to enable the incident settings here, so you can group together incidents. And you can have the alerts grouped together as well too, so that they correlate into incidents. And this is more granular detail that I won't be getting into. 
The automated response capabilities really relate to the integration with logic apps within Azure. So if you have made playbooks, you can define the automation that would occur on upon alert generation or upon incident generation as well. And so if you pop into the logic app section of Azure, here you'll be able to define what the triggers are, and that could be from this alert here in this case. And then you can decide what actions to take. And those actions are obviously up to you and they could work out of Microsoft systems or third-party systems. It may be that you want to generate a service ticket within ServiceNow or a PSA tool or something like that. It may also be that you want to have some type of automated response to those activities as well, which is completely customizable here within Logic Apps. The final section I wanted to showcase here is under Threat Intelligence. I think of this section as where you could define indicators of compromise. So basically defining certain IPs or domains or things like that that you want to take a little bit more action on or do a more heightened investigation on. So if I click on add new here, you have your types and today it's domain name file, IP addresses or URLs. And so you could classify these, you could add a domain, you could add threat types within your organization and you could add more metadata like a confidence level or a validity date range here as well too. So this allows you to do more investigation against this particular domain or whatever you select as far as the types within your organization. And you can also have more of the true positives as far as the alerts that are generated potentially by injecting this information into the existing machine learning that's going on within this environment as well too. So lots of cool capabilities here and I would suggest that you play around with this after you've taken some type of ingestion period for it to do some machine learning about the behaviors of the users and entities within your organization. So that's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys today on investigating threats. Stay tuned for my next video where we'll be going through advanced threat hunting within Azure Sentinel. Thanks guys. Have a great day.